What exactly is one second? In the modern world, the interval of one second is an incredibly long one. Racing cars and athletes can be timed to one thousandth of a second. And even the basic computer controlling the fuel and ignition systems of a car can perform millions of flops. Floating point operations per second. That's hardish sums in everyday language. But to divide a second up so precisely, we need to know exactly what a second is. Well, we know what it is because we can look at a watch, a mobile phone, a computer, a central heating controller, or any one of countless things that incorporate a clock of some sort. But before clocks, the second was a bit theoretical. But here's the weird thing about the second. The technology of timekeeping revealed it to us, but then technology forced us to redefine it. In antiquity, timekeeping was a rudimentary affair. Sundials could give a rough but variable idea of the time of day, and hourglasses and clepsydras, as water clocks, could be used to time the ancient boiled eggs. But practically dividing the day into anything shorter than an hour was really beyond the wit of man. The Egyptians came up with the idea of dividing the day into two lots of 12 hours. And then the Greek astronomers, including Ptolemy, watched the stars and defined the hour as we know it, and then divided it up sexagesimally, that is, into sixtieths. The term second actually means the second division of the hour, a sixtieth of a sixtieth. But without clocks, this was really still just a subject for mental gymnastics rather than a meaningful way to time a naked Olympic sprinter or coin a phrase such as, hang on a second, Aristotle. Mechanical clocks would eventually provide a means of seeing how long a second lasted. Once a mechanism had been perfected for moving a hand around a dial once every 12 hours, it was then a simple matter of gearing, and therefore arithmetic, to add more hands that showed one twelfth of that time, and then a sixtieth of that, and so on. For hundreds of years, beginning in the mid-16th century, the second was exactly that, a mechanically derived thing that mirrored the celestial clockwork of the heavens. And since no mechanical clock can be truly accurate, minor discrepancies in our working out were irrelevant. During the second's purely mechanical era, there were even rivals, most notably the decimal time system proposed in revolutionary France. This never really caught on, but the French did at least make the ephemeris second, the one derived by astronomical observation, part of the metric system. It is one eighty-six thousand four hundredth of a solar day. And that appeared to be that until the arrival of atomic clocks in the 1950s. These perfectly accurate timepieces revealed that the rotation of the Earth in fact fluctuates randomly and that the Earth, as a clock, loses around 0.6 of what we thought was a second every year. And this threw up a discrepancy between mean solar time and the atomically derived universal coordinated time, the result of which is that since 1972, 25 leap seconds have had to be added to the calendar. So the old definition of 1 86,400th of a solar day was thrown out. In its place, the world's clock-watching boffins substituted this. The second is the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. So now you know. It is interesting that it takes four minutes to explain what one second is, but anyway, I'm extremely grateful that you stuck with it. If you'd like to hear more of this stuff, and to be honest, some of it is a bit more interesting than that, why not subscribe? It doesn't cost anything, you just click the button here.